Okay, so the final class of uh, lipids that we're going to look at are called sterols. And uh, a sterol uh, right here uh, in a structure, this is a common sterol that you know, uh, may not be able to recognize it, but it's cholesterol. All right, so the OL part of sterol uh, is really referring to that it has this one, if you remember, hydroxyl group. Uh, making things in alcohol. Now, the rest of the molecule is, is big uh, and is all full of carbons and hydrogens for the most part. So this whole entire molecule, this whole thing uh, doesn't like water, right? This whole thing is non-polar. And there's only this one little part here um, where there's uh, polar bonds between the oxygen, the carbon, and the, this hydrogen here. So overall, this molecule does not interact well with water. It's considered a lipid. It is largely nonpolar. Um, when you see these ring structures, um, what you're really seeing are uh, an abbreviated way of putting all these carbons in. So they're actually carbons at every corner, every point location here. In the ring, there's a carbon. Uh, this area here shows that that's a double bond. So that would actually be a double bond between those two carbons right, in that ring. Um, then typically you have somewhere, you know, the, sticking off the hydrogens, the appropriate number of hydrogens, you know, for each carbon. That typically gets taken away when we, we draw that structure. So um, it's something that you need to acknowledge that it exists. That's what you're actually looking at here, because some people look at this and they just really don't know what is that what is that ring. So it's really just carbons that instead of being straight and linear, they've been folded and, and connected to one another into these rings. Uh, this is, has a special name, a cyclopentophenanthrene ring structure, um, and that's common. This ring structure here is common uh, in all sterols. So sterols are going to have that ring structure. Now this part up here, that's unique to cholesterol. So it adds more nonpolar. It's a carbon, carbon, carbons, and hydrogens, all nonpolar bonds. Um, sometimes where these methyl groups here, carbons and hydrogens, there could be additional um, OH groups. Um, another group of molecules that are, are sterols are, are steroids, uh, the sex steroids, like testosterone and estrogen. They are based on a cholesterol molecule frame, and then they have some alterations to the structure, uh, typically things that make them a little more polar in parts, uh, only in a certain places. Uh, marine animals and aquatic animals that release um, pheromones into the environment often have to make them more water soluble. So again, basing it off of this very nonpolar molecule and then making up molecules like estradiol and progesterone, they then add other things to them uh, biochemically uh, to make them a little more water soluble uh, in, in uh, certain respects. But for these, um, typically in, in my course, we don't really have to draw them, but you should be able to recognize them. So you should be able to recognize and explain the structure of a cholesterol molecule. The other thing that is also going to be important for you as we uh, put a cholesterol molecule into the cell membrane. And that's what you'll, you're going to find as we start to draw membranes. So this is a little preview of, of what is to come. Uh, but when we start to draw what, what's to come uh, and we put together cell membranes, what we're going to have are little things you might recognize like this as our phospholipids. Right? Uh, and membranes are going to end up with bilayers. So you're going to have two layers of phospholipids uh, where the tails, which don't like water, are oriented toward one another. And the areas that do like water uh, are to the inside and the outside of the cell. We're also going to then find that membranes as have uh, cholesterol molecules as a major component of them. And the cholesterol molecules, because they are largely nonpolar, most of the cholesterol molecule is going to be found in the region between these tails. Right. And this little OH group, you know, we'll kind of keep it, you know, right there between the, the polar heads that we looked at. So, a super simple way of drawing the, the complicated phospholipid uh, that we looked at in a previous um, previous presentation and the cholesterol has a more complicated structure. A really super simplistic way of looking at them uh, is like this. 
Um, but what's important is you know, orientation, uh, things like this. If, if I said, here's a phospholipid, you draw the cholesterol, not this whole thing, but just draw a little box or a rectangle and show me where you would find it. Uh, you know, if you put it outside, you know, here, that would be wrong. It's, it's all nonpolar. It's not going to be where the water is. If you put it just right in the middle here, also, it has this little little polar part that kind of brings it to the outside. You know, it, it has to be, it's not between the heads, you know, either. So these are all, you know, things that are wrong. So you wouldn't find it here, you wouldn't find it there, you wouldn't find it here. It has to be uh, located there. And the explanation for that really has to do with the structure. So for you to understand the structure, not necessarily to draw it, um, will be important as we start to look at how it is integrated into a membrane. If you want to be able to understand and explain that integration, then you need to at least be able to reference uh, the structure of the molecule itself. So just take a look at that. Make sure you could identify it compared to other molecules. But uh, I guess in, in my course, again, you're not going to have to draw this, um, but be able to, to explain you know, what it is and, and uh, why it's a lipid um, and how then eventually we'll get more into this detail with the membranes. So that's, uh, that's it for lipids, and then we'll be moving on to other molecules.